uh, going to talk about genetics, also, especially in terms of statistical genetics and omics resources. Okay, so here's a theme of my research topic. And also, I believe this is also a theme for everyone here. So how we can understand human genome sequences. So this is a blueprint of humans. If we can fully understand this sequence, we can reconstruct individuals. But it, it, currently, it is still uh, difficult. So our thesis is, how can we display this blueprint? And also, how we can extract biology. So we are currently only seeing the top, but we also tip, but also need to see the bottom. And to display the blueprint of human genome sequences, catching up to the latest dry and wet technology is really essential. So technology always more rapidly develops than we expected in both dry and wet fields. Implementation of the latest this technology is critical in their side. So new technology analysis always give us new science. Understanding mechanism of this technology is also essentially necessary to develop useful history too. So this is very easy to say about how to do, but we just need to keep trying. So here's the history of the last 15 years, how we analyze association study, DNA, and RNA sequencing. So currently we are like deep learning, long read, and single cell things. So anyway, we need to always catch up and keep changing. And as announced in the previous talk, so human genome projects became truly big. So here's the UK Biobank. They have launched 500,000 subjects. Amazing. 15 years before, 500,000. It's a kind of a value in some fantasy, but now this is real. And phenotype is also available. And more than 1,000 human traits, there has been a report for variety of human genetic variants, which defines our multiple phenotypes. So this is the, some example in our current achievement. So this is, the, I think, the, this is the largest GBUS ever. GBUS with 5.4 million, which was an alert height. Which have a successfully identified more than tens of thousands of high dosage loci, but this study shows that after the number of sample sites become bigger than around three million individuals, what we learn or what genetic data explains heritability became saturated. So we is a saturated map of common genetic variants on Jiva. So I think in some words we are now at the some stages of Jiva's. So this is one of the initial finalizing state of GBUS. The, the other current topics for GBUS is cross biobank collaboration. So here's our latest uh, collaboration was Biobank Japan from Japan and UK Biobank from England and Finland from Finland. We have conducted a parallel GBUS for 20 deep phenotypes. And these resources be from more than 600,000 individual provide tons of association genetic loci. And functional annotation of these GBUS results tells us biology and also new disease classification based on genetics. And I'd like to say deep thanks to especially metabolomics GBUS data annotation, which was kindly provided from Tohoku Medical Megabank Tomo. And this, this omics resource successfully tells us the biological insight of these resources. But doing GBUS itself is not difficult. Everyone, I think everyone can do it, but how to connect human genetics to biology, drug discovery and medicine, it is still a difficult task, but disease biology, drug and medicine. So this is the goals of the human genetics and life science. We should definitely do our efforts on how to translate left side to right side. I would like to today show several omnibus stories of the, our strategies. So one of the is the COVID-19 mix analysis. So actually I do like to see the person in, meet uh, in person, but uh, regrettably the most of the, our work is still online. So here's the COVID-19 pandemic in Japan. We are now, I think that's the last stage of the seventh wave. So what we have learned from pandemic is everything happening was unexpected for us. So we currently do not know what is COVID-19, when AIDS waves occurs or not, how much magnitude. So pandemic has been strongly a long mystery for us. But I think genetics is a powerful tool when we meet this kind of 
unquestionable thing. So JVAS or Genetic is a kind of the hypothesis-free approaches. So even though we still do not know what is COVID-19, genetics of COVID-19 can tell us the pieces which are critical to COVID-19 biology. So here's one of the open science achievement, COVID-19 first genetic initiative, which has been initially released around, I think half a year later, just after the launch of pandemic. So this type of GBUS results tells us actually human host genetics is involved in COVID-19 severity. And genetics is a powerful tool to this fight. Anyway, the variant in chromosome three, which has strong risk on around the ratio of two Europeans. But this variant has been absent in Europeans. So we definitely need to our own effort in Japan. So we have launched Japan COVID-19 Task Force, which is completely academia-driven initiative to, to face these challenges for COVID-19. So finally, we have collected more than six individuals of affected subjects from DNA, RNA, and Sarah, and collected from 100 hospitals. So we are now conducting a nationwide GBAS or other type of omics resources. Our first report is GBAS uh, on younger severe cases in the initial phases of the pandemic. And after G conducting GBAS, of course, we do not observe signal in chromosome three. This is absent. But we found that uh, another hit in the chromosome five, which is uh, Asian population specific variant. And this variant is located near DOCSU. Uh, DOCSU is an immune cell specific expression gene, and this reg critically regulates innate immune cells. And this is a RAC activator regulating lymphocyte activation type of interferon production. So biologically at the center of the uh, COVID-19 infection. And this is also a Mendelian disease re gene for recessive DOCSU deficiency as a uh, combined immunodeficiency and severe invasive pneumonia. So, we think that DOC2 down regulation in COVID-19 patients and DOC2 preservation causes COVID-19 severity. If we can find this result, we can say DOC2 maybe a causal gene for COVID-19 severity. And to this for these biology, we started to use new technology. So single cell sequencing. Now here's a famous figures for comparison between bulk RNA-seq and single cell RNA-seq. And single cell RNA-seq can tell us the detailed information of the cell's components. So we use this method and, oh, I'm sorry, it's English and Japanese, but anyway, we found that DOC2 is specifically expressed in innate immune cells, especially non-classical monocyte. And the expression is just regulated in COVID-19 patients, a severe patients. And disease risk variants have COVID-19 and non-classical most specific EQT effects. So uh, anyway, DOC2 is really just regulating COVID-19 severity, but this also shows that combination of GBUS resources and omics resources, something like single cell sequence, can tell us new insights in bio disease biology. And then we move to how to perturbate DOC2. So it was nice that the Japanese researcher, Professor Fukui at Kyushu University has developed a DOC2 specific inhibitor, CPIPP. So here is a serial hamster model, which loses weight after infection of SARS-CoV-2 viruses. When we put CPIPP and DOC2 inhibit, this weight keep losing and they get died. So we found that weight loss, lung edema, enhanced viral loads, and impaired macrophage increment, and dysregular type of interferon responses in CPIPP P hamsters. So maybe we can now say that DOC2 is involved in the severity of COVID-19 severity. So anyway, a uh, combination of GBAS, omics, and mouse model analysis tell us the new biology of the unknown diseases. Okay, let me move on to the other part of the omic source, human disease microbiome analysis. Because it has been massively done genetics and epigenetics, and microbiome is uh, another fundamental resource for human diseases. So this is a um, genetic material of all microbes that live in and on, inside our human body. So microbiome has biological 
interaction with host. And now considered as a new organ in our body. And they have a link with a variety of human diseases. And here, new technology tells us new sciences. Previously, we have done 16S ribosome RNA gene sequencing, which is nice, easy, simple, but we lose some detailed information. Metagenome shotgun sequencing is a kind of whole genome sequence for microbes. This tells us more fine results, phylogenetic analysis with the highest resolution of species level, and functional analysis gene is passing also virus information in gut. Uh, so anyway, we should need to move on to from 60S to metagenome shotgun sequencing. So we apply this method to conduct microbiome case control comparison. So here is a rheumatoid arthritis case control phylogenetic association test. Maybe we call them metagenome wise association study. So not GBAS, but MWAS. So here's a figure. So outer layer shows finer resolutions. L7 is species and we found that uh, crates, especially belonging to free water, is, is significantly increased the gut of the RA rheumatoid arthritis patients. It's really interesting because we have learned that RA is a disease of immune, immune and blood and bone, but microbiome is also another component of the diseases. And then we are now expanding our MS approaches to other wider range of disease in, and it still surely tells the interesting results. So uh, to further understand the microbiome of Japanese, we construct the Japanese population specific microbiome genome, MAG. So this is called JMAG and Virus JVD. So integrating our around 800 gut metagenome shotgun sequence data. And yeah, they, anyway, we found several interesting uh, uh, interaction with our dietary habits or some genetic variants and also virus integration analysis and some virus and prokaryotic interaction. But anyway, what we know is we did not understand well the gut microbiome Japanese. So we definitely need to develop the detailed catalogs of the microbiome in a population specific ways. Anyway, we found that uh, population specific enrichment, bacterial subsidies, uh, this is from NATO, and genes for beta polyphenolanazase, poly this is for nori. So, what we eat definitely define what we are in our gut. So, then how to do the personal medicine? So, one of the point is the genetics, something like project risk score. So for diseases with high prevalence and age-dependent onset, stratification population subjects based on project risk score, PRC is an effective tool for personal medicine and prevention. For especially this is effective for the disease with high prevalence, something like type 2 diabetes. If we, if we can get genetic risk in early stage of life, it is very uh, informative. Then, we may need to integrate other omics resources. So genetics is a really important factor, but another omics layer, microbiome, phenotypes, microRNA, metabonome, this kind of integration of omics resources should help us to proceed personalized medicine or personalized prevention. And the, my last message for this part is, this kind of effort should be done in trans-ethnic and trans-biobank initiative. So no single researcher or no single biobank can do this. International coordination towards this important topic is very important. So global biobank networks and their feedback to the population. So in this time of things, something like International Commodities Alliance, this kind of international alliance should help to uh, finally achieve our personal medicine in near futures. And this is one of the cross biobank peers achievements. So PRS can also be used as an instrumental barrier to infer causality on clinical outcome. So cross, cross biobank PRS causality analysis tells us that the obesity and high blood pressure is a modifiable risk factor for longevity. Okay, let's move on to the uh, final part of uh, my talk. So genomics based drug discovery. So uh, the final goal is not only personal prevention, but also the drugs. So even, even though you're 
predicted that you are going to be uh, this disease, but without providing drugs or treatment, uh, the prevention will not be well conducted. So novel drug delivery is important, but novel drug discovery, discovery is becoming challenging and expanding year by year. So we need any very change, namely genomics driven drug discovery. Currently, how long way to drug discovery, bigger cost and lower successful rates. So we definitely need to improve genetics of disease genetics in the process of drug development. So this is genetics driven genomics drug discovery. And here's an interesting paper. So we are now in the era of disease genetics driven drug discovery. So among the 50 drugs approved by FDA in last year, two thirds of the drugs had support of disease, disease genotype phenotype associations. Especially high proportion or highest proportion of the drugs with spots for common, was found for genetics or common diseases. So this shows us the value of GBAS in drug discovery. Now GBAS is the strongest resource for drug discovery. Our group have been working on this type of GBAS based drug discovery. So this is one of my initial my works. The disease screens are enriched in drug targets for disease itself. So this finding should motivate us to get stream drug repositioning. So namely drugs directly targeted by GBAS identity disease risk genes are candidates for drug repositioning. Here is an uh, one of the initial results for RA, CDK4 and CDK6, which has uh, targets by many inhibitors, which are uh, positioned for related diseases and animal model of RA. So DGBAS gene is a good resource for drug discovery. And our group have been making some tool to prioritize. Uh, we have made some MyGBAS or GREPS or something like this to transfer. These kind of tools are GBAS driven approaches to find new drug candidates. Especially we have published or, or uh, some best practice of genomic drug discovery in the era of global biobank collaborations. We have shown how combination of multiple methods is effective to prioritize drugs for GBAS result in biobank era. And our approach are sure effective. See, this is an example for stroke. So our approach successfully can prioritize previously known and new candidate drug targets for stroke. Anyway, GBAS is very uh, useful for drug discovery. And finally, I would like to move on to these in silico screen should in vivo and at bed. So finally, definitely we need to deliver what we found in genetics, what we found in computer to the bedside. Okay, uh, here's the final advertisement. I have been working on summer school every year. So if you have any interest, please join our summer school course. This is completely free. Okay, uh, this sub result has been supported by so many collaborators. Thank you for your listening.